morning day killing machine. This is uh, something I had anticipated my whole life, essentially, well, half my life. Well, growing up in the foothills in, in Pleasant View, right below Ben Lomond, um, the state of Utah had introduced uh, Rocky Mountain goats there, and my brother and I became very interested in uh, that species, being able to glass them, you know, relatively close to home. But the, the story really began about 20 years ago when uh, I switched from applying for uh, bighorn sheep uh, to Rocky Mountain Goat. My brother Matt and I grew up hunting together our whole lives and uh, I was fortunate enough to go on his Rocky Mountain Goat hunt in uh, 2013 where he was successful and it was a real good bonding experience. At that time period he promised that he would be there on my hunt. He still was on my hunt. Unfortunately he had a bulge disc in his neck but still took time off work, came down, helped in glass and uh, ended up packing out some at the end. Uh, my brother-in-law Nate played a, a crucial role. A, number one, he had hunted it two years prior, so he had uh, knowledge and experience of the terrain. Um, then, what better way to uh, go out on a once-in-a-lifetime hunt if you don't take your taxidermist with you, too? So yeah, thanks for inviting me to tag along. Uh, well, I, I'm glad you're crazy enough to want to come along and do this again. Well, you know, I couldn't sleep at night knowing he's up there all alone. I was honored to be there. Well, I'm glad you were again. I, I, a, the craziness to want to go do that and suffer through that. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah. So, I guess I've always been fascinated with mountain goats. Um, just because of the terrain and the ability to survive such harsh terrain and climate. I mean, they live in the steepest, roughest terrain that is known to man. Goats definitely have a lot different body size. It's like uh, putting little legs on a 55 gallon drum. Um, so you definitely have to be very uh, aware of where you're gonna be hunting to make sure that A, your goat is gonna even be recoverable, um, let alone huntable. They are definitely built to move through the mountains. I don't still is remarkable how they're able to grip onto the tiniest ledges um, with hooves um, and just the sheer strength of them how tough these animals are it's but it's definitely a, a very unique animal there's a lot of hair on these animals that's for sure going in with this expectation of a once in a lifetime tag i would have been happy to um, harvest an eight inch goat and happy for the opportunity to hunt I didn't think 10 inch billies lived in Utah anymore. So I, I enjoy shooting my bow. Um, usually I would shoot uh, maybe between 5 to 15 shots in the morning, same at lunch and same in the evening all throughout the summer. Began to shoot a lot of steeper angles both up and down. I, I mean I practice routinely at 80 yards all the time. Um, as for hunting, I wanted to get it within uh, a reasonable range that I felt comfortable with. So th this summer, um, I went down and scouted the area, and with a little bit of information provided from my brother-in-law, Nate, I knew that most goats were going to be uh, located on three main peaks. Uh, I did not know how remote some of these areas were, and then once I was actually boots on the ground, how steep the terrain was. You can't describe it properly. Just know that goats live in the worst possible terrain. I almost called the state and turned my tag back in because I didn't know if I was going to be able to do it. So I drove down two days earlier before my uh, hunt dates even started to try and get uh, an idea where most of the goats were. Hi friends, it's Nate. I'm headed up to Mount Nebo to meet Josh on his once in a lifetime archery mountain goat hunt. Uh, there's Nebo, coming up. Anyway, I'm on a few hours of sleep. Had lots of problems getting away from home as usual. But it's the day before his hunt starts. I'm going to help him scout first. And then we're going to go kill a goat in the morning or
maybe 10 mornings from now. I guess we're gonna find out. Hi, Josh. What's up? Did you give up on me? No. You made killer time. Well, I'm excited. Well, that's good. What are we doing up here anyway? Well, chasing goat. You excited? Seen a few. Are you shooting straight? Practice today. You Felt got a, good. You got a plan? I think I got a plan. How many years you put in? This is uh, 20 years. Don't screw it up, you yeah, idiot. Yeah, hippie right? goof. <laughs> okay, well, we'll see you on the mountain. Okay, sounds good. We decided to hike into a face that I had glassed over 100 goats on. Yeah. Okay, day before the hunt, night before the hunt. We're hiking into the wilderness, Nebo wilderness. Don't tell anybody. Yes. And hopefully we'll make it out. Absolutely. Weather's supposed to kind of get kind of squirrely, isn't L it? A little sporty come the end of the week, but we're good to go. Yeah, nothing we can't handle. Fortunately, we were able to camp in the only flat spot on this mountain range and close enough, you know, 500 vertical feet of fresh water as well. Um, unfortunately, we ran into another set of tents in there. You know, assuming they're hunters, someone that far in, um, we thought we'd see what their game plan was in the morning as well. Also being low on water, we weren't sure how much hunting we had in us. So our main plan that morning was just to glass um, see if I could relocate the goats that I'd seen uh, the morning prior. Oh, not this again. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. Opening day. Okay. You excited? I'm excited. <laughs> Should, uh, we're gonna make something happen today. I don't know if we can get the wind to calm down. I don't know if the air was gonna fly straight this morning. Just gotta get close. Yeah, stab it. <laughs> Should be a good day. You're one of the best hunters I know. If anyone can do it. Yeah, well, I appreciate the vote of confidence, but uh, <laughs> anyone else, I wouldn't be dumb enough to come up here. Uh, I, I don't blame you. I'm still questioning your thought process to why <laughs> you wanted to come do this again. Okay, okay, so 6.30, we should be able to glass in about 15 minutes. Yeah. So first thing in the morning from our camp, we were able to glass up uh, some goats and some potential targets. Hey Josh, I think we have our first goat spotted, huh? I, I think we do for first, uh, first goat of the opportunity in a stockable area. It's not too far from camp, so fingers crossed. We'll and it's uh, something done. First light opening day. What's likely a billy up there, bedded above a saddle. A few more goats moving north. But, uh, I think this is the one to try and get close to. So likely. Billy, just because she's alone, he's bedded, probably in a stockable location. So we might make a play. We're gonna go. We're gonna go try something. Okay, let's do it. Right. Being in there that morning, the other hunters actually had seen those goats as well. We decided to see how their play was gonna be. We let them go pursue these goats. Um, they were fortunate and, and harvested a uh, younger billy. And we were really low on water. We realized we had to go down, drop some elevation, get some water, formulate a game plan for our afternoon. Well, getting ready for our afternoon stock. We have a few goats that are spotted by my brother who's glassing from a couple miles away. And then we also have a really good billy in uh, a location that 
I'll zoom theoretically in. could be stockable. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens, but I like the location of it. For stalking, I don't like the location and where the goat's at to get to it right now. Goats are where they are, and usually in the worst spot possible. That's why they're big. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed that we have um, some goat activity. It's been hot-er today, and the goats are still up and feeding pretty late in the afternoon, so we'll see what happens. Right on. So we got that goat behind your shoulder, which is a good target, we've decided. Great, great target. And then this is the knoll up here that your brother can... Your brother's able to glass it from the parking lot, and he says there's 12 goats up there. So we're on our way to check those ones out first, and that'll give us a good uh, elevation gain to hopefully get around and get on this other billy. Okay, let's go get so him. Let's first, do it. first stock of the day, opening day. Yep, let's get it done. As we moved up to the saddle, unfortunately all the goats, the 100 plus goats we had seen the morning prior were able to see us, so we were essentially pinned down. During that same time period, the lone billy had decided to move off into an unhuntable or retrievable area. The goats above us finally moved off and kind of joined the main herd. We were able to get up into the saddle. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't really make a play on any of the goats because they were all out in the open. There's no cover for us. So we ended up just sitting there glassing most of the day. Um, during that time period, we were able to relocate some of the big uh, billies we'd seen that morning and just were hoping that they would feed back down so we could get ahead of them. I think that might be that one billy. Josh, yes, what's the plan? The plan is for me to drop off this saddle here, cut under a cliff face, try to intercept the uh, billies at kind of a pinch point down here. Um, so we're going to motor here quick and uh, hopefully have it wrap it up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Today's the day. Today's the day. But good news is we gotta go down anyway. So having a, having a head start won't be a bad thing. Once the goats began to start to feed down, um, I was gonna lose some elevation and intercept them. Uh, able to use some of the, the cliff terrain and um, sneak relatively close to them without them noticing me. During that time period, I had a few goats and actually some Rocky Mountain sheep very close to me. Uh, my brother-in-law, Nate, was behind me able to actually let me know if any of the billies changed uh, course of action. There were a few above me, but I could see a few bigger ones off to the uh, north 
in a different ravine and that was my that was my main focus to try to get over to them. So I'd seen a target Billy on the on the far side of the basin and I knew that was going to be the hardest place to get to. Um, he was relatively easy to recognize based upon the stains on his sides and also the size. Even though he was with some other billies, he stood out. So I dropped down a few more cliffs, ended up uh, dumping my, my pack for the second time, figuring out if I could get over there, double checking the, the wind, ranging all the different features, making sure that there was enough terrain that I could actually move across to even get within range of it. Shortly after dumping my pack, I knew that was going to be the last ravine that I was going to be hitting to, to climb back up to get to a cliff face. And there was one cliff face I knew if I could get to there, I would be covered. Once I passed that cliff face, I knew I was going to be exposed. It was uh, quite the experience. There was a few cliffy sections I didn't know if I could uh, climb down and had there not been a really great billy, I don't know if I would have. My target billy was 30 yards past some of the other goats that were in between me and him and it was quite a nerve-wracking stock because I had a lot of goats watching me. I uh, was able to sneak into a, uh, a cliff face where I was precariously perched, I'll just say that, on the edge where I couldn't get much further with the uh, smaller billies in front of me, or in between me and my target billy. It was uh, quite a long stalk. I would use very slow movements, making sure their eyes were dropping down. They all knew something was there, they just didn't know what. As I was on my final approach, um, my heart was racing, once in a lifetime tag, light is fading, I knew it was a now or never situation. I had not only a once in a lifetime tag, I had a once in a lifetime billy in front of me. Uh, while hanging on the edge of a cliff and trying to draw your bow and keep balance. I missed my first shot. I don't know if it was broadhead failure. I suspect that as I saw my uh, fletchings kind of corkscrew off to the left. That made me especially nervous. I re-ranged quick uh, to make sure that I wasn't off on my shot. Everything looked good there. Uh, shot again and I missed. I hit right behind it. The goat ran a few yards closer. I realized that I needed to calm down. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Light is fading. I can't hang on the edge of this cliff all night. And this is now or never. was able to collect my thoughts, make a final shot that ended up connecting and finishing uh, my once in a lifetime hunt.
That's how you do it, Josh. Freaking A, man. You're an open opening day killing machine. Billy down. A good Billy. It's a good Billy. Uh, do you, he's twice as big as mine. We'll see. <sighs> he's the biggest up here. He's the dinosaur. That thing was awesome. That was a lot of cliff running. And I had those uh, Rocky Mountain sheep. The little kids kept running down the cliff. I know. Running. They went crackers. You promise he ain't gonna roll? Oh man, I don't know, his spot and legs are out. It's, it's right behind his shoulder. It's not a little low. I was thinking hard. Walking up on your big billy. Oh yeah. Make me proud. Right here. Let's see how big, if he's as big as what I thought he was. Oh my goodness. Look at that. My once in a lifetime Billy. I'm afraid to even move him until I anchor him. But that is so awesome. Nice long horns you got going on there. That's that's a good Billy. Oh, well, congratulations, Josh. Yes. This thing, I couldn't have done it without you, Nate. Ah, shucks. That's, uh, that's for sure. But that's your first, I think. It looks like a good one, though. This is a big goat. The, definitely the biggest one we saw up here hunting. Um, made a fun stock on him. Able to use the drain and the cliffs to sneak right up to him. Look at this thing. Nice hair. Great hair. Great pantaloons. That thing is just incredible. September 20th, opening day, got it done. <laughs> Good job, man. Oh yeah, that thing is awesome. Oh shoot, okay, well I guess this is when the party really starts beginning. Yeah, figure out how to uh, uh, keep it from going further. And See, it actually gets a lot worse where you stop. Yeah, <laughs> this I like the way we came. Sweet. What a thing. Once in a lifetime. Never get to do that in Utah again. What a cool, cool animal. So fortunate. Wow. What an awesome animal. This thing is crazy. Oh, what a goat. What a goat. Nate and I knew we were in for a full nighter. It was him and I. Wind, snow, rain, dust and dealing with the terrain, it was a party. So we, we cut up uh, my goat all night, um, uh, hung the, the remaining meat in the main ravine, went down, got a couple hours of sleep before we had to be up to gather the rest of the meat. Um, upon approaching it, we heard some noise above us and we thought it was kind of cool for a minute. A bunch of goats ran right above us and knocked down a big boulder, which then started to kick a whole bunch of rocks down as well. What we thought was neat and within two seconds turned into a life or death situation. As Nate runs to my right, I run to my left, trying to dodge this boulder. Um, it disappeared out of sight for a minute. Next time I saw it, I saw it was going towards Nate. I yelled as loud as I could. He pauses and that boulder passes right past him. Um, when you think uh, the, the hard part of the goat hunts over, it's not over. Uh, Nate and I packed out camp and what meat we could and I had called my good friend uh, Russ and then my son Tyler to come help us retrieve the last of the meat as well as my brother Matt to meet us halfway and fortunately for us the, the weather, the snow started to really come in a little bit on that last uh, pack out so it was good to get off the mountain. Upon eating some uh, goat tenderloins with Nate and Matt in our tent that night, uh, the wind began to really rip again for the third night in a row when you think you're about to get blown off the mountain. Um, it's like Nate says, there's nothing easy with goats.
having had that experience and seeing how remarkably tough and resilient these animals are, um, it's uh, something I wish I could do again. Um, it's hard to put to words. The experience of this actually means more to me uh, more than what the size of the goat is. Now I was fortunate. We'll just put yet to be determined, but I already know it's a really good goat and it is going to score well in the record books. But to me that means honestly less than the experience and also the people I got to share it with. Uh, my brother-in-law Nate, my brother Matt, my son Tyler, and a good friend Russ. All were there to either help glass, tax, or cut up, scout, pack. It was quite the experience. And that, that in itself, and being able to share those experiences with, with family and friends actually is, uh, it means a lot.